Last time, we made GraphQL queries using Strawberry Shake in our client application against our GraphQL server, which uses hot chocolate, so that we could get data from the server. But that was just for getting data. What about creating data, updating data, or deleting data? Well, now our GraphQL API supports GraphQL mutations, and mutations are used for just that, for creating, updating, and deleting. So let's take a look at the mutations that we have on our API now, and those are in our schema. I've reorganized this in my GraphQL server series. So we got this mutations folder and we have this root mutation type. So we can create a course, update a course, and delete a course. So those are the three main operations that we're gonna be doing in our client application right now. So right now I have the API running in the background right here. So we're all good. We can start working on our client. So before we start making those mutations, we're gonna have to pull down our new schema and I feel like we're gonna have to do this every video because our API is constantly changing. So let's open up this in the terminal and let's pull down the new schema. That's a .NET GraphQL update. So got the new schema, schema.graphql. Now we have our mutation type. So these are the mutations that we're gonna make. And now that our schema has those, we can put together our GraphQL documents in order to make those mutations. So we have this queries folder we're gonna have another folder for mutations. You can organize your folders however you wish. I might restructure this a little bit down the road, but let's add our first mutation in here. I will call this create course mutation.graphql. Again, don't have a .graphql file type yet, so we'll just select class, make sure we have the GraphQL extension in our name, and create that. Get rid of all the class stuff because obviously it's not a class. Now we're ready to put together our mutation document. So similar to our query document, we're gonna specify the operation and then the name of the operation and any parameters. So in our case, we're not doing a query, we are doing a mutation. And we'll name our mutation create course. And let's bring up our schema. So what parameters does this take? And looking at create course, it takes a course input, which is a course input type input. So one thing about the generated code is that it appends input at the end so this is kind of weird because we have input in the name here. So we have input twice. And that's because on our API, we named the input type course input type. So one thing we can actually do to make that not look weird is we can rename this input type that's on our API to course type input. So there we go. Now we already have input at the end. And now if I shut down my server, rebuild, and then start my server in the background again, and then do another .NET GraphQL update. So pull the new schema. Then as you can see now, it did not specify input twice. So that might be something you wanna do if you don't want input in the name twice, which in my opinion looked pretty weird. So anyways, back to focusing on the client. Let's specify this parameter in our mutation. So as we recall, we use a dollar sign for that. And this is gonna be the course input. That's what we'll name this parameter. And the type of this is gonna be a course type input which matches what we have in our schema and now let's open this up and specify the mutation we want to make so we want to make a create course mutation so this name matches the actual name of our mutation and that mutation requires a course input and we'll set our course input to our course input parameter that we of course prefix with this dollar sign to denote that it is a parameter so now we specify the mutation we want to make and the data we want to get back. So we do have to actually specify the data we want to get back. And the data we get back is a course result. And that gives us back the ID of the course, the name, subject, and instructor ID of the course. So in this case, I think all I want is the ID and the name. Let's snag that. And might as well just grab the subject as well. And that should be everything we need to specify for making our first mutation. But before we demo this, why don't we just scaffold out the other mutations too? So we're gonna have another GraphQL document in our mutations folder. This will be the update course mutation dot GraphQL. Can't forget that. And then one more just to demonstrate all of our mutations. This will be the delete course mutation dot GraphQL. So create that. And for this update course mutation, this is pretty similar to the create course mutation. So I'm just gonna start off by copying everything from there and pasting it in here and just changing all of this to update instead of create. So the name of the mutation, the actual mutation that we're gonna make. So this is update course, and that matches 
the mutation in our schema update course and this mutation also returns a course result so we'll just grab the same three fields from that result and now the last difference is that our update mutation also takes the id of the course we want to update so this is our id parameter which is a uuid which is going to be a guid in c sharp as we'll see so let's specify that we'll call this variable id and again the type is going to be a uuid and we will also need an exclamation point at the end as specified here because the uuid is not nullable and then we actually have to use that id variable in our mutation of course so let's specify that down here and i do think that the order of your parameters does not matter i feel like i've never actually tried but let's go ahead and try so the id is going to equal our id variable and of course this order is different so course input is before id which is different than our schema but i'm pretty sure it's not going to matter we will find out and then lastly we have our delete course mutation i'm going to copy this update course mutation to start with because we do have some shared variables here specifically the id of the course that we want to delete but we will not take in a course input because we don't need it we just want to delete a course by id we will name this mutation delete course and the mutation that we want to call is delete course mutation so let's paste that in there as the mutation name and this delete course mutation it only returns a boolean and since boolean is a scalar type so it's not an object doesn't have any fields in it we do not have to specify any fields to pull out of the result because there are no fields so we can just specify nothing and just plop the mutation in here so we've defined our three mutations in our graphql documents deleting a course updating a course and creating a course Hopefully we won't have to come back to these and they are all good. So let's go ahead and build. And we might run into the same problem where our GraphQL documents aren't at the root of our project. So the code gen might not actually show anything. And yeah, this is not changed since our last commit. So what I'm gonna do is move all of our documents to the root of the project real quick, at least for the mutations, because that's what we're trying to generate. And we will build again. And there we go. Our generated code has changed. As we can see, now we have this create course result right at the top. And it looks like our queries are still in here too. So we should have all the generated code that we need. Let's move our mutations back into their mutations folder, which is now gone. Where the heck did it go? Maybe I have to add it back into the project. Let's do that. So include in project on that folder. Move these suckers back in there. I don't know why I get this error every time I move a file in my project. Maybe I should actually read it and find out. Oh, it's because it's a .graphql file. I guess it doesn't like that, but that's what we need. So can't really do much about that right now, especially because right now we are going to focus on actually executing those mutations. So last time we changed up our program.cs, now we have the Microsoft host in here. And we have this hosted service that we call it startup. And that resolves the GraphQL demo client. That's part of our generated code that we did register in dependency injection. And it points to our GraphQL API that we specified in our app settings.json. So we got the URL in here. So we're starting to get some structure in this project, but now we're gonna update our startup so that we don't just execute these queries. We wanna make some mutations. So first we're gonna create a course because once we create a course, then we can update the course. And then once we update the course, we can delete the course. So we'll be able to just do all the mutations one by one by one. So let's create a course. This will give us back a create course result. That's what we'll call this variable. And all we got to do is take our generated client, which now has a create course mutation property on it. And we want to execute that with our course input type. So let's instantiate a new course input type and the course input type takes the name of the course. We'll call this GraphQL 101, the subject of the course. So this is an enum and our subject enum does get generated by Strawberry Shake. So that's pretty cool. We will consider this science, computer science, I guess. And then the instructor ID, this can just be anything we want because we don't really have any instructors right now. And we're not really using this property on the server side yet so it'll just be random and let's see what is this result let's see what is var it is an i operation result for an i create course result so let's look at that result and let's just dig right into the data i know previously i've been doing is error result to check for errors and do some kind of error handling but we've already seen how to do that let's just assume that it's gonna work 
so we don't have all of this bloat and eventually this will evolve into a more robust application but right now let's just focus on the mutations so our data has this create course property which has all the data and specifically we want the id right now because we're going to use that id to execute our update and delete so let's put that into a variable the course id and it doesn't like this question mark here because if data was null, it would give us back a nullable GUID, and we just want a regular GUID, so no question mark. We are assuming that the call was successful, so it shouldn't have to null check that, but now we got our course ID for our created course, so now let's update the course. So this will give us back an I operation result for an I update course result. We'll call this the update course result, and all we're gonna do is take our client, which has an update course property, and we're gonna execute that, and this takes two parameters, First, we need the course ID of the course we want to update. We got that from our created course. And then we need a course input, which has the updated data for the course. So let's create that. And the way this update works is it's a full update. So you have to specify all the properties for the updated course. So we will need a name, which I do want to change. This is now GraphQL 102. And this will still be subject science. And the instructor ID, we will just generate a new GUID here because we don't care right now. And now again, not gonna be error checking. Let's just snag that data out of the update course result. So in this case, I'm just gonna grab the updated course name. So we'll put that into a variable and we should do some console write lines. So let's do that. Let's write out successfully updated course two and do some string interpolation here. So this course has been updated to GraphQL 102, which is just the name of the course. And then let's also do a right line for creating a course too. And successfully created course. And then the name of the course again, which we haven't gotten into a variable yet, but let's just pull that out right up here. We'll have to call this a unique name. So this is the created course name. And this is in the create course result and the create course name. So use that down here. We should also rename this to be updated course name. So we've created, we've updated. Now we're gonna delete the course. So this will be the delete course result. And we'll take our client again, take the delete course mutation and execute that async. And that just takes our course ID, which we already have from when we created the course. So pass that in. And this gives us back an I operation result for a delete course result. And that should just have our Boolean, which is true or false for success since we don't actually return an object with data. So if we look at that result and the data and then look at our delete course result, that is just a Boolean. So put that into variable delete course successful. And now if delete course successful, we'll just write out successfully deleted course. So we got all three mutations in here. We got delete course, update course and create course. Let's plop down a breakpoint right here and step through this. So let's start with the client. Let's create this course. So let's step over this and let's see. Let's look at our data. So we created the course. We got the ID, name, and subject back. That's good. So we should write that out to the console. So there we go. Successfully created course. Dollar GraphQL 101. Dang it, too much JavaScript. So JavaScript, string interpolation, you put a dollar sign. So we don't want to do that here because this is C sharp. So let's try updating a course now. Let's execute that mutation. There we go. Was successful. We got our update course result, which has the same ID, I believe. Yep, looks good. And then we got our updated name and the science subject that we passed in. So we should write that out to the console. There we go, successfully updated course to dollar sign GraphQL 102. So I did it again. And now finally deleting a course, let's just run that. And there we go, we get the log successfully deleted course. So delete course was successful. So we had no trouble executing these mutations, but what if our GraphQL server has an error? How do we handle the actual errors? So one error that can happen based on these mutations is if we try to update a course that does not exist. So what we're gonna do is instead of passing in the course ID here from our created course is we are gonna pass in a random good. So this course will not exist. And now what is gonna happen? What is our result gonna look like? Let's actually run this. So we got our breakpoint here and our update course result does not have data, so null, but it does have errors. So let's open that up. We got one error in here and we specified an error code on our API. 
So we can read that error code and do what we want. And our error code here is course not found. So what we're going to do is look for this error code if we have an error when we update the course and write out the appropriate message to our console. So I feel like I had said earlier that we're not going to worry about errors at all, but now we're actually digging deeper in the errors, but I feel like this is a good time to do this. So what we're going to do is check if our update course result is an error result. So same kind of check as before, except this time we're going to actually dig into the errors. So we're going to take our result again, look at the errors and we'll just get the first error. So we'll do a first or default and this gives us back an I client error. So let's get that. And we did do first or default here. So the error could be null, but we executed is error result. So we should have an error in here. So we'll just do first instead. So error should not be null. And now we'll look at this error and look at the code. So if the error code, I think our error code is course not found. Let's check the API real quick. So on our mutation, we got course not found. Let's just copy that and paste that in here for our error code. So if the course was not found, then we'll just write out to the console course was not found. But then I guess if the error code was not course not found, then we'll just write out unknown course update error. But then if we did not have an error result, then we will actually write out the course name. So let's go ahead and run this and we're still passing in a random good for the course we want to update. So we should get course not found. Let's try it out. And there we go. Course was not found. Although we still get unknown course update error because I messed this up. So we should have an else here. Duh. Let's put that into the else statement. And there we go. Now we just get course was not found. So just wanted to show that off real quick. I suppose one thing that you could do is move your error codes into a shared project so that your API and your client always share the same error code and we don't have to rely on this magical string. So maybe we'll do that down the road as we start to turn this into a more organized application because as you can see right now, we just have everything in this one method, which I suppose is okay. We're just focusing on GraphQL concepts right now. But I do want to clean this up later on in the series. So just to summarize, our GraphQL API now has mutations. So we made sure to update our schema using .NET GraphQL update. So we pulled down the new schema and we got our mutation type in here now. And then we put together some GraphQL documents so that we could execute those mutations. So we got a create course mutation, delete course mutation, and update course mutation, which all take different variables. And we did see that the order of parameters did not matter. So that was exciting. I've never actually tried that for some reason. And then we built our project. Strawberry Shake did all its magic and put together all of our generated code. So all we had to do was call this generated code in our program.cs. So we created a course using our generated GraphQL client, updated the course, and deleted the course. And then we also saw how to handle specific errors from our GraphQL API. So our GraphQL API returns an error with this course not found error code if the course that we tried to update does not exist so we handle that here and vert that out to the console so hopefully you can apply these concepts in your own application to execute mutations against a graphql api and ultimately build your dream application if you have any questions criticisms or concerns be sure to leave them below in the comment section if you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel consider becoming a member other than that leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.